Okay, so uh, our story begins with Prussia, and uh, we did a, a little bit on Prussia uh, earlier in this unit. You might remember that these these uh, Prussians are pulling territories together. It's, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, the reason for their, their existence is the military. Uh, there's that joke that, that Prussia isn't a state with the military, but it's a military with a state. And you can kind of see that going on here. This purple, uh, this purple bit in the middle is where it starts, and then it's got... It either inherits or takes over some territories um, in, in the direction of what is Poland uh, or even down here in uh, the more western parts of uh, Germany. Today's story really has to do with this bit down here, Silesia. Um, so Silesia is taken, as you can see, in 1740. That's really the, the beginning of this war of Austrian succession and then it's going to be fought over in the next war, which is the Seven Days War as well. I like to imagine Prussia, by the way, kind of looking like a wolf uh, facing this direction. Did you kind of see that? And and then what is what would it be biting? Poland, Poland yes. <laughs> That's kind of exciting. It would, be, it would make a really nice tattoo, I think, but it would be very um, suspect, I think, and you could never, you know, go swimming with your shirt off. Just say it. Um, probably a bad idea, but who would be playing it, I guess? A wolf. Prussia playing Here's Europe in 1740. Then this is on the eve of this War of Austrian Succession once again. And we're looking at the great powers. Uh, we have the Kingdom of France, of course. I'm going to ignore this green bit down here. I don't think they're that great anymore. There's Great Britain. Uh, the Austrians, or the Habsburg Empire, is really this Austria and bits of Hungary and so on, and then various territories all over the place. There's the wolf about to bite Poland. There's Poland. It still exists, but not for much longer. And then, of course, Russia over there on the right-hand side. In the first go-round uh, of, of, uh, of these mid-century wars, we have the War of Austrian Succession. Now, the War of Austrian Succession doesn't occur like the War of Spanish Succession. Spanish Succession is you, you've got a guy who doesn't produce any children because he's really genetically messed up. And so when he dies, then they fight over Spain and the New World and everything that's uh, this War of Austrian Succession really has to do with a woman, and this woman is uh, Maria Theresa. She is the only, well, she's not, she's the eldest daughter of the Habsburg Emperor uh, who, who passes away in 1740. Now, he had this thing called uh, his, we don't really care very much about him, he doesn't do much, but Charles VI is the Habsburg Emperor uh, who passes away. He didn't have any sons. He had uh, a, a few daughters, and, and Maria Theresa is the oldest one. So Maria Theresa takes over, but her father had this thing called the Pragmatic Sanction, in which he, he wanted uh, everyone within the Habsburg Empire to recognize that a woman would be allowed to succeed him, and everybody outside the Austrian or the Habsburg Empire should say that whoever you know, this eldest daughter is uh, should be able to rule as well. Everybody inside the empire signed on to it. Everybody outside the empire signed on, signed on to it. Uh, he passes away. Maria Theresa is 18 years old. She takes over. And then pretty much everybody ignores it because she's female. And in fact, she's attacked by her neighbor, Frederick the Great. So in the first go round, we have all of the different uh, countries sort of siding one way or another. You've got Prussia and France on the same side. With Spain, we don't really care that much about, they're not going to help very much. Versus Austria, the Habsburgs, Britain, and the Netherlands. Do you see how, how those, those, those matches or how those enemies are kind of like grudge matches and they make sense to you? Like who hates who in 1740 out of those two sides? Exactly. And what'd you say? France hates the Netherlands, yes. France and the Netherlands are oftentimes at, at, at odds with one another. Can you give me more from, from a historical standpoint? France doesn't like the Habsburgs in Austria. True. And Fra Spain is allied with France because uh, they had a Bourbon king. Yep. They, they, they're cousins, royal cousins, right? What about, uh, what about the one in the city? What about France versus Britain? Don't they hate each other too? And Prussia we don't know too much about. Um, yeah, Britain and Spain from time to time as well. Netherlands and Spain from 
plenty of time. You've got a bunch of different grudge matches going on. Well, like I say, this starts off with uh, the pragmatic sanction being ignored. Who cares that everybody you know, signed on to a legal document that said that Maria Trace would be able to be the empress? Frederick the Great, a guy who really grows up, um, his father thinks he won't amount to much. His father actually almost executed him once for, uh, for running away from, from, uh, from duties. And so Frederick proves his father wrong, takes his father's really large army, and attacks that bit that I was showing you about, the, the lower jaw of the wolf, Silesia. He takes that over. It's got about three million people in it, German-speaking people for the most part, and it doubles his population. Maria Theresa then says, all right, Habsburg Empire, rally to me. And pretty much everybody says, hmm, we'd rather just wait and see what happens. So she goes before uh, the Hungarian Diet and talks to the Hungarian lords. She's queen of Hungary. And she says, oh, great lords, please help me out. Frederick the Great's a jerk. He's attacked us. He's tearing our, our empire apart. Usually the Hungarians are kind of so-so with, with helping the Austrians. Um, but, they, but then she's, you know, she's a young woman, and she says, and if you don't do it for me, do it for this baby. And she, she pulls out her son that she just had, um, Joseph. And the Hungarian, the, the lords, their hearts are melted, and they say, well, of course we'll rally to your defense. Of course we'll, we'll uh, fight back against the Prussians. And so Maria Theresa is able to, with her Austrian empire, uh, fight for her survival. France, meanwhile, says, what, a war's going on? Uh, let's, let's jump in on this war. We're going to take over land in, uh, in the Netherlands. Maybe the Netherlands. Or right, right south of the Netherlands. The Austrian Netherlands. Spain jumps in because they had lost some stuff in the war of Spanish succession and wanted to grab some stuff back. Mm, good luck, Spain. The Netherlands defends itself against France, as it always does, and Britain hates France, so they jump in on the opposite side of France. They always have to be on the opposite side of France. And they also have uh, a, a new king, a guy by the name of George, uh, George I. And he's from a place in the Holy Roman Empire called Hanover. George I and George II are still the rulers of Hanover. And so they're interested in what happens next to Prussia. They're interested in what happens on the continent. They can't just be hands off of the continent yet. So that's why we have the War of Austrian Succession breaking out, or that's why different uh, different sides are chosen. It's fought uh, over Silesia. You can see Silesia here is now yellow. Um, it spills over into the Austrian Empire. There's a bit of fighting that's going on over here by the Austrian Netherlands or in France. You can see there's a bit of fighting going on in the northern parts of Italy. There's some fighting going on in the New World as well. In, uh, in North America. And it lasts for about eight years. Here's the result. Frederick the Great. He's, he's becoming Frederick the Great, actually. He's just Frederick II at this point in time. But he's becoming Frederick the Great because he's taking land. He takes that lower wolf jaw and is able to hold on to it. That's a win for him, a huge win for him. And here's a win for a young woman with a baby. She's able to not lose her entire inheritance. She only loses that very important bit of Silesia. The rest of it she's able to hold together. Credit to her. And Britain and France spend a lot of money. And don't really get a whole heck of a lot for that. The reason I mention that is because both of them are going to have a problem eventually with um, revenue, with trying to raise revenue. And the reason why they're the reason why they have a revenue problem is that they're spending so much money on these mid 18th century wars. There is in 1756 a diplomatic revolution that happens. Britain was really impressed with Frederick the Great. And they decided that they wanted to sign a defensive pact, or they wanted to sign a kind of alliance. And if those two are going to be switching sides, it makes everybody else shuffle around. Like if France, or if, if Prussia was allied with France, and now Prussia's allied with Britain, Britain has, or France has to switch sides. 
And so the weirdest thing happens, and this is a one-time thing, France and Austria, France and the Habsburgs, who've always been fighting each other since the very first time that this class began, they decide to put aside their, their enmity and be together in an alliance. It's a, it's a one-off deal. It's not going to last beyond this war. Because of that, they decided to seal the deal with a royal marriage. So they got the, uh, the, the young man who was going to be king one day, and one of Maria Theresa's many children, and they, they married them. Uh, they sent a princess, an Austrian princess, to France. You probably know of her, or you, you probably even know her name. John, go ahead. Is it Marie Antoinette? It is Marie Antoinette. Yeah. So we'll talk more about Marie Antoinette. That's how she ends up in France. On a one-off deal. Poor thing. The Seven Years' War breaks out, and it looks pretty grim for one side, I think. You've got now Prussia and Britain on one side versus Austria, the whole Habsburg Empire, France, and now Russia jumps in. Russia's ready to, to make its you know, grand stand as a, as a European power after uh, Peter the Great put them on that track. And now you've got this going on. Uh, let me think about this. This is uh, Austria, France, and Russia all around this period of time have 20 million uh, people, 20 million subjects. So it's about 60 million people there on that side. Prussia has 6 million, three of them, three million of them fairly new because they're from Silesia. So it's like a 10 to 1 odds. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying it that way because Britain doesn't field big armies. Britain has a big navy, yeah, which is great for them. It's great to defend. You can, you know, mess around with French ships in the, uh, the Atlantic coast and everything. Uh, but in general, it's 10 to 1 odds in this Seven Years' War. So it looks like Prussia is going to be crushed. Once again, it's fighting around Silesia. It's fighting that actually gets into Prussia this time, uh, fighting, in, fighting in central Germany. Um, some fighting going on in the Caribbean and uh, some fighting going on actually in India, which is a little bit weird, but Britain and France have some troops in India. And then quite a bit of fighting going on in, uh, in North America as well. We call those the French and Indian Wars in the, in the United States history. Well, at the end, even though it's 10 to 1 odds, a funny thing happens. It was only funny for, for one side, I think. Uh, Frederick holds on to Silesia, which is it's just amazing. 10 to 1 odds, he holds on to Silesia. In fact, Frederick was about to, uh, he was about to lose um, the whole thing. He had Russian troops invading Berlin. And then uh, the, the, the Tsarina who was in charge died. And, uh, and, and a new Tsar came to the throne who was a German kid who had a Frederick fixation. He loved Frederick the Great. And when his, his Russian troops were about to beat uh, Frederick the Great, he said, stop, 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 stop. All the Russian troops pull out of the war. Come back and, and leave Frederick alone. Uh, that got him killed, actually. He got beaten to death by uh, some Russian noblemen. noblemen. But it's, and it saved uh, Frederick the Great's Prussia. Maria Trace was kind of sad. She was you know, hoping that she would be able to get back uh, what she had lost in that War of Austrian Succession. Britain and France spent lots of money and got very little. And, and they're both about to experience, within just a few years, revolutions based on taxation and representation. Uh, Britain does, though, take Quebec from France and kicks the French out of, out of most of North America. And then Russia got a, uh, a Tsarina, a German Tsarina. Like I said, this, uh, this young man who pulled the troops out of the war uh, had, had married a young German woman. And, um, and since he was beaten to death by, uh, by some Russian noblemen, she becomes the Tsarina of Russia, kind of obscure person to be the ruler of Russia. So she calls herself Catherine. 
So in, in 1770, the map kind of looks like this. Prussia still looks like a wolf biting, uh, biting Poland. And uh, here's, a, here's a big Austrian empire here. They, they lost Silesia, but gosh darn it, they still have quite a bit. This gray mass over here is France. The red up there is Britain still. Poland is still in existence. And then this pinkish or purplish or whatever color that is, uh, is Russia. And I'll just remind you, too, um, soon thereafter, Poland gets doubled up. This is where the biting of the wolf happens. Poland's weakness that I described to you before, um, earlier in this unit, is uh, it makes them a really nice target. And they get gobbled up by Russia and Austria and Prussia. And they just do it because they can. There's no, you know, it, it, there used to be things like uh, dynastic reasons. Like, oh, I, I married somebody or were related in some sort of way and somebody just died, we can take it over. That was the, the war of Spanish succession. But nope, it's just, uh, hey, let's keep a balance of power going and these guys are weak and we're strong. Yum. All in for breakfast. Poland for lunch, Poland for dinner. The last couple, uh, 93 and 95, it seems like Poland is pulling itself together. And if it's going to pull itself together, then you have to gobble it up before it does. Kind of abuse of power. Really. That's it. Any questions? Questions from home? Nothing? Could you get your device out, please? Those of you at home, you might want to stick around, too.